What is true spiritual ascension? You might have heard this term in the New Age. If not, it's it's really this idea that you're ascending your soul to a higher energy, a higher vibration. Now, it's considered that all things are energy, which is true. E equals mc squared, even mass um, is energy, and energy is vibrating at a specific rate. So it's believed that to have a good vibe as a person, to be a good person, you're a high energy person, that you have a high energy, a high consciousness or a high vibration. And ascending is going from those dark emotions, those dark character traits, and ascending to a high stature of love, of peace, of, of compassion, tolerance, um, different positive things like that. And that's the transmutation of your soul, the ascension of your soul and your consciousness until you reach perfection, godhood, you break free from the cycle of suffering, you break free from this world, you reach enlightenment, nirvana, samadhi, the different words for it. But but is that true? What What is the true biblical process of ascension, meaning of ascension? Well, the true process of spiritual ascension is ascending Mount Zion. Mount Zion is synonymous for the city of God. It's, it's ascending, it's becoming more like God, but who is God? How do we know who God is? Well, being formed in the image of Christ is being more like God. The true process of spiritual ascension is ascending our soul to the nature and image of Jesus Christ. Yeshua Messiah, the human being who came 2,000 years ago and is the perfect ideal human to have ever lived the perfect righteousness, the model example. Buddha wasn't perfectly righteous. Gandhi, Muhammad, Confucius, you read a lot of their autobiographies, Gandhi's, he's not perfect. He's not perfectly righteous. He was seeking Brahman, the, the Hindu concept of godhood. You know, like in yoga, you're yoking yourself to Brahma, which is the Hindu deity of, of godhood, the supreme deity. So he was seeking that, but Jesus Christ is that. He didn't travel to India. He didn't travel to the East and do Qigong and yoga. Nowhere in any scripture, of literature, of history, anywhere do we have that. It's more faith to believe in that than the actual truth of Jesus Christ and his life and what we know about it. It takes way more faith, blind faith, to believe in those New Age concepts and occultic concepts of Jesus Christ instead of what we actually know. He is the ideal. He is the perfect example. True ascension is ascending that Mount Zion, is ascending the, the path of righteousness, becoming more like Jesus Christ, perfecting our faith. Paul was praying that he could, he could be with the people he was writing to to perfect their faith, to, to perfect what was lacking in their faith, truths that they didn't know, dis, you know, deceptions they were be believing, preventing them from becoming more like Christ coming into a deeper relationship with God. Ascending Mount Zion is merely approaching God. Now, God lives in us. You know, Paul wrote that it's he who is dead, but Christ who lives in me. Christ lives in us. The Holy Spirit is in our heart. We are sealed for the day of redemption. But becoming formed into the image of Christ, becoming more like God is that path, is that way. He is the way, the truth, and the life follow him. He's alive right now. He's, he's here right now as you watch this video. He's watching you. He loves you so deeply. He wants you to commune with him. He wants you to be with him. He wants you to follow him so your soul can be saved from what's to come, so your soul can be comforted in his presence. True spiritual ascension is allowing the unrighteousness of our flesh, of our soul, of our character to be burnt by the perfect holiness and the fire of God on the altar of God. Offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Our body is really actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not ours. It belongs to Christ. Our body. And we are meant to allow the Holy Spirit to operate with full control in our body to give the reins to him. When that happens, at the max rate possible, your transformation occurs, your transmutation into the image of Christ. Your soul being, being formed more closely to the image, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. 
your heart being cleansed, purified by his word. Then truly you are ascending. You are spiritually ascending. You are spiritually progressing. The Bible says that physical, physical exercise profits a little, but exercise in godliness profits in all things and for the time to come. It's exercising in godliness, which is the true spiritual path of ascension. But what is godly? Jesus Christ is the image of perfect godliness. Because you might be following some kind of yogic concepts of this ascension or kind of some different teachers, Joe Dispenza, Abraham Hicks, um, you know, different teachers who teach on ascension. There's many other different ones that I used to listen to, but you really get the, the, the ideal of what you're ascending to. Just, just think about it. They say love, but what does it mean, love? Many people have different concepts of that. Pedophiles believe love is towards children. People who grew up in this cult um, believe that God is love and love is given through sex. So literally, children are, are meant to have sex with these adults in this cult. Um, extremely heinous extremely wrong versions of love. Now, most of these new age teachers don't have that extreme, but what I'm getting at is the principle of love can mean different things for different people. Yet in the Bible, in the life of Jesus Christ, we have a clear example of what love is. You don't have that clear example in these different teachings because Satan disguises it to, to make it sound great and fluffy and great at the, at the beginning so your life goes in that direction, but really you don't really know where you're going to. There can be a lot of value that people get from some of these journeys of spirituality, trying to become a better person. You know, they realize that they're an angry person, that they treat their spouse horribly, that they're 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 greedy, or they they want to be a better person for humanity and uplift humanity, and they become for the greater good. And different virtues are actually instilled in them. And Buddhism is about developing compassion ultimately to break free from su suffering. But try and define what compassion is. Try and actually have a material thing to grasp at. That's where you start to see, oh, that's where Satan puts in the deception. He doesn't want you to know Jesus. He doesn't want you to know the true path, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is perfect righteousness. Jesus Christ is alive right now. You might have grown up in a dry church or a judgmental, completely religious, very cold, uh, uh, you know, hard-hearted church and people. Don't let that view, don't let those people define your image of God. Seek God for himself. Seek him through his word. Read the Bible. Reach out to Jesus. Say, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you for who you truly are. Don't let things you might have grown up with that were not right or things that were done to you or, you know, people in church said something to you or hurt you in some way. They could be acting out of the flesh. They could be acting in contrary to the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. Reset. Disconnect from that. Disconnect from that. those versions of what you think the biblical God is, that he has revealed himself through scripture. Jesus Christ is real and he loves you dearly. True spiritual ascension is in following him, becoming more like him. We're meant to focus not on this world, but the things above. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven. Spiritual ascension is real, but true spiritual ascension is following Jesus Christ, becoming more like him. Allow him to convict you. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sin, to convict you of your unrighteousness, to convict you of different qualities that you might have that, that are hiding in you. Many times demons are lurking there. Many times that's right where the demons lie, in that unconfessed sin, in that area of your heart that is dark. That's where they operate. Maybe out of trauma, created this vengeance, created this bitterness, out of this offense that these demons are operating in. You will receive freedom and deliverance as you do this as well. Because perfect righteousness is a breastplate. In Ephesians it says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. That protects your heart. Your heart, in the New Testament, is synonymous with your soul. The perfect righteousness of Christ, those demons can't get in. They, they can't get in. You're protected. Because you're putting on the righteousness. When you sin, you open up a door. There's a legal right. Satan can then enter your life in a certain amount, a way. Not fully, completely take your you know, salvation, a very small sin you do. But he can get a little bit of hang of you. He can get into your heart, sow some little seeds. 
But when you're protected in the righteousness of Christ, you live in freedom. You live and you walk in true deliverance and freedom. And your ascension journey goes forward the more like Christ you become. So I urge you, analyze yourself. Analyze your soul. Analyze your your character. And seek God. Seek Jesus. I want to know your character. I want to be more like it. I want to, you know, read your word. Let your word come alive to me who you truly are. What is true righteousness? Read his parables. Read the gospels and, and try and, you know, understand. The Holy Spirit will give you guidance. Understand the, what he's trying to say the meaning he's trying to present. He's instructing you in righteousness. The Bible says that all scripture is profitable for the instruction of righteousness. All scripture is God-breathed. It's inspired by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. I hope this video helped you. If you kind of were curious about this or, you know, you, like me, were in this whole ascension journey. My Wi-Fi at my apartment when I was deep in this, I was doing DMT rituals with my friends and having these massive crystals warding off demons burning sage uh certified yoga instructor at the time very into this whole new age stuff seeking enlightenment seeking truth seeking light to be able to help people help people heal you know i was on the ascension journey my wife i was called the ascension zone so people would log into the ascension zone when they come in come to my house i need to get on the wi-fi you know like this is a big term in the new age it's a very big turn. It's connected with energy, vibration, good vibes. Good vibes are max frequency. You need to ascend your frequency, elevate your frequency. But the true frequency you should be resonating at is the frequency of God through Christ. That's the true frequency. That's what you're meant to ascend to. God bless you. Have a great day.